Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about stroke territories. So a lot of medical students, when they see questions about which cerebral artery is affected, which lobe is affected, etc., it can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully the next two slides will break it down fairly simply for you so that you'll be able to answer any question on stroke territories. So to begin with, let's just focus on the basics of neuroanatomy. So I'm not going to get too complicated here. I'm just going to focus on the different lobes and also where the certain parts of the brain that are responsible for various functions are located. So as we know, each cerebral hemisphere is split into four lobes. So we've got the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. So now I'm going to go through a few specific parts of the brain that are responsible for the clinical manifestations of strokes. So when people present with a stroke, we can figure out which type of stroke it is based on their clinical features. So that may be a sensory problem, a motor problem, a visual problem, or a combination of all of them. So first and foremost, the primary motor cortex is the part of the brain which is responsible for initiating any of our voluntary motor commands. And this is located at the posterior aspect of the frontal lobe. On the other side of the central sulcus, we've got the primary somatosensory cortex, which is located in the parietal lobe. So this is responsible for processing various forms of sensory information. Then we have our primary visual cortex, which is located right at the back of our brain in the occipital lobe. However, one slight complication with the visual pathway is that it actually goes through a couple of other lobes as well. So we get the information coming in from our eyes. It goes towards the lateral geniculate nucleus, which is the little red blob there. And from there, we have optic radiations, which go via the temporal and parietal lobes towards the primary visual cortex. And finally, Regarding our language perception and our speech, Broca's area is located in the frontal lobe and that's responsible for producing speech, whereas Wernicke's area in the temporal lobe is responsible for understanding language. So just keep this image in mind because it'll help understand the stroke territories. So it would be very convenient if the blood vessels that are involved in strokes only supply one lobe at a time because then we can easily figure out what the manifestations may be but it's a bit more complicated than that. So the blood supply to the brain has this central distribution network called the circle of Willis which is where lots of different arteries come together and there are three main parts of the circle of Willis. We've got the anterior cerebral artery at the front, the middle cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery. So in terms of what actually provides the input to the circle of Willis, we have the vertebral arteries coming in on the posterior side. And then we also have the internal carotid artery, which gives rise to the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. So to begin with, let's focus on the anterior cerebral artery. So the parts of the brain that are supplied by the anterior cerebral artery are most of the frontal lobe and also parts of the anterior parietal lobe. So the frontal lobe is responsible for executive functions such as impulse control and planning and it's also where we find the primary motor cortex. Whereas the anterior parietal lobe, if we refer back to the last diagram, is where we find the primary somatosensory cortex. So on that basis, a stroke involving the anterior cerebral artery would cause behavioural changes. So patients may be less able to control their impulses and they may have a marked personality change. As it affects the primary motor cortex, it'll cause weakness. And the primary motor cortex is divided somatotopically, which means that certain parts of it are responsible for controlling certain parts of our body. So it's worth having a look at Penfield's motor homunculus, which is a diagram that nicely shows which parts of the primary motor cortex are responsible for certain parts of body movement. So in this case, the legs are mainly controlled by the medial part of the primary motor cortex and hence in anterior circulation strokes the legs will be more affected than the arms and as the anterior cerebral artery also affects part of the anterior parietal lobe you'll also expect to see a mild sensory defect the middle cerebral artery provides a blood supply to parts of the frontal lobe the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe so this will result in some weakness as well because it involves the primary motor cortex 
but as per the motor homunculus, it'll affect the face and the arms more than the legs. So as we noted in the first slide, this area will also include Broca's and Wernicke's areas, and hence patients are also likely to develop aphasia. As it affects the primary sensory cortex, there'll also be a hemisensory defect, and it's also likely to affect parts of the optic pathway going towards the occipital lobe, resulting in a homonymous hemianopia. Finally, the posterior cerebral artery is responsible for supplying the posterior aspect of the brain, and this is where we have the primary visual cortex. So as expected, posterior circulation strokes will also result in a homonymous hemianopia, but it can also have more complex effects on how we process visual information. So visual agnosia refers to an inability for a patient to identify fairly commonplace items, and prosopagnosia is an inability to recognize faces. So all of these can manifest from a posterior circulation stroke.